I'm going to share with you some dangerous ideas of Mahatma Gandhi that we kept alive. I went to a very expensive, snobbish, elitist education in India. It almost destroyed me. I went to a college that produced prime ministers and presidents, and I was all set to be a diplomat, a doctor, a teacher, businessman. And then I went to a famine in Bihar, saw death, starvation, hunger for the first time, changed my life. Went back home, told my mother, I think I'd like to live and work in a village. Mother went into a coma. She said, what is this? Your life is laid out for you, and all of a sudden you want to do something strange. There's no money, no security, no prospects. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I said, I'd like to live as an unskilled laborer, digging wells in the deserts of Rajasthan. She didn't speak to me for many years, because she felt I'd let my family down. But then I was exposed to the most extraordinary knowledge and skills that very poor people have, that you don't read about it in books or colleges. You feel it. You see it. You are awed by this knowledge and skill and traditional wisdom that very poor people have. So I thought I'd start a college only for the poor. It's the only college in the world which is a college only built, managed, controlled, and owned by poor who live on less than $1 a day. When I went to this village for the first time, 45 years ago, the elders came to me and said, are you running from the police? I said, no. You didn't get a government job? I said, no. You failed in your exam? I said, no. Why are you here? All the people who went to your school and college went to New York and Delhi and Zurich. What are you doing here? Is there something wrong with you? You're not telling us? I said, no, I want to start a college only for the poor. So they gave me some very good advice. They said, please don't bring anyone with a degree and qualification into your college. So it's the only college in the world that if you should have a PhD or a master's, you're disqualified to come. You have to be a cop-out or a drop-out or a wash-out to come to the college. You have to work with your hands. You have to believe in the dignity of labor. So the Barefoot College also believes in what Mark Twain said, never let school interfere with your education. School is what you learn how to read and write. Education is what you get from your family, from your environment, and from your community. So we redefined professionalism. Professional, who is a professional today? Someone who has a combination of competence, confidence, and belief. A water diviner is a professional. A traditional midwife is a professional. A traditional bone setter is a professional. All these people are in villages all over the world. You don't recognize them because they've never been to school and college, but they have tremendous respect in the village. So only these people we actually identified and brought to the world outside, brought them into mainstream. The Barefoot College is 500 miles southwest of Delhi. We believe very clearly that there's a difference between literacy and education. You heard what Toffler said. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. That is the essence of the Barefoot College. So everyone said, oh, you're talking so much about it. Show us what you're doing. So we built the Barefoot College. This man still can't read and write today, but he built me a Barefoot College at $1.50 a square foot today, in two years. And this is what it looks like today. We have barefoot dentists. What is the most powerful way of communicating today? Communicating today? Television? Telephone? No. It's tell a woman. <laughs> we have barefoot dentists, grandmothers who don't know how to read and write and let yet looking after the teeth of 7,000 children 
who go to our schools. 60% of the children don't go to school in India because they look after animals, sheep, goats in the morning. So we started the night schools of Thelonia. 1975, children, boys and girls who never go to school because they look after sheep and cattle and goats, and they go to the night schools. Over 75,000 children have gone through these night schools at night. They all learn about their family, they learn about the village, they learn about village institutions. They couldn't care less who the Prime Minister of India was, but they were very concerned about who the village leader was. So, 7,000 children go to 150 schools. But, after every three years, we have an election. Six to 14 year old boys and girls elect a Prime Minister. The Prime Minister today is a girl. She's 12 years old. She looks after 20 goats in the morning, but she's Prime Minister in the evening. She has a cabinet. Minister for Education, Minister for Education, Minister for Energy, Minister for Women. And six years ago, the Prime Minister went and got the world's children's prize. The Queen of Sweden gave her the prize. Queen of Sweden was baffled, said, where did this girl get so much confidence from? She's just barely got out of village. She's come to Sweden. All of a sudden, she is as if she's been in Sweden all her life. Please ask her where she got her confidence from. So I asked her, where did you get your confidence from? She looked at the queen straight in the eye and said, please tell her I'm the prime minister. 60% where you have, don't have literacy, where you don't have the written word, where you don't have television, we use puppetry. Puppets is the way we communicate social messages. This puppet is 300 years old. His name is Joachim Chacha. He's my psychoanalyst, he's my doctor, he's my teacher, he's my lawyer, he's my donor. He solves all my disputes in the village. These puppets are made out of recycled World Bank reports. If you come to India, we will see solar cooked food by the women, all women who are illiterate making solar cookers. It's the only college which is fully solar energized in India. 100 kilowatts of panels on the roof, and we only believe in training women. Because we have found out, much to our regret, that men are untrainable. Men are ambitious. Men are compulsively mobile. Men are restless, and they all want a certificate. And the moment you give a man a certificate in Africa, he leaves the village looking for a job in a city. So who are the ones we train today this is the lighting that they have in Africa. So, who's the one we train today? We train only grandmothers. Illiterate, rural grandmothers who have never left their village in their lives. We bring the whole community together. They decide on how much they're willing to pay for lighting. They decide. The community collects the community contribution and then they select a grandmother. For the first time, she leaves her village ever in her life. She's never been on a plane. She comes to India, stays six months. She can't use her language. Only through the written and spoken word, she learns how to become a solar engineer. She knows more about solar engineering than any graduate after six months of university. They all sit together, 40 grandmothers from 10 countries, first time ever coming out of the village, all speaking to each other, not understanding a word because they speak French, Spanish, Jola, Wolof, but they are solar engineers because they learn charge controllers and inverters. They are demystifying technology. They're learning how to make mosquito nets. They're learning how to make sanitary pad units. So in five years, we have covered almost the whole continent of Africa. We have covered 10 islands in the Pacific. Our greatest fan is Michelle Bachelet from Chile. 
She used to be the head of UN Women. And she said, this is a f program that you're empowering women, you're making them change agents, you're making them role models for the first time because grandmothers are now valued in society. And they go back and solar electrify their own village without any help of any engineer. That's Chile and Peru, and that's Afghanistan. We believe in partnerships. I have a fantastic partner in the government of India. So should I select any grandmother from any part of the world? The Indian government gives me the airfare and six months training course. Incidentally, we have four grandmothers from Mexico right now in the Barefoot College. When the Dalai Lama came for the first time, he was fascinated. I said, we will train some Tibetan women also. He said, no, no, Tibetan women can't be trained. I said, in six months, I'd like you to train some Tibetan women. And he came to the Barefoot College, walked around, looked at the Barefoot College, made a puppet of him also as well. And he said, you know, now that you've shown the Barefoot College working in practice, let's see if the experts and the professors can make it work in theory. Impossible. We are doing everything wrong. And yet it seems to be working. So we've covered 64 countries, trained 800 grandmothers, and not one has failed me. All of them are solar engineers. They have actually improved the lives of 450,000 people. I will end with a quotation of Mahatma Gandhi. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. Thank you.